Hello everyone and welcome to uh, a rather bodged, shall we say, uh, broadcast that's been put together for live and uninterrupted coverage of round 12 of the 2012 GPVWC Super Cup. I am Scott Woodwiss along with uh, Dave Carsmith who's looking after the cameras. Uh, you'll have to bear with us and just kind of accept what we've got here for the moment. Obviously we've had some problems with simrace.tv so this is gonna, unfortunately only going to be a T-cam kind of onboard broadcast only. Uh, so unfortunately the only shots you're going to be having are from the T-cams. Uh, but you just caught the cars on a warm-up lap so I'll quickly cycle through who we've got. Uh, we'll be doing the start with OJ Clark who's starting fifth for No Fear Racing but the quick run out of the grid as the field is now on their way round towards Blanchimont as uh, on pole, we've got it's an all CSG front row. We've got Alex Cooper and Martin Schumacher. Then Petter Kassa is sat in third place for Torrent Motorsports. Fourth for Halcyon Racing, we have Bart DeVos. Fifth, as we said, is No Fear Racing and got onboard car for the start. Sixth place is Andrew Morgan for Tiger Express. Seventh on his return to Motor Force is Jason Muscat. Eighth is Martin O'Connor for NRT Racing. Ninth, the second Motor Force car of Terence Grech. And rounding out the top ten is Adam Rouse for Hawkeye. And quick, let's go through the, the field, not mentioning teenagers, but just driver names. So, from 11th to the back of the group, we have 11th, Phil Cullen. 12th, Boyd Bryson. Keith Camilleri, 13th. 14th, Jim Parisis. 15th, Andres Peshtov. 16th, Scott Bennett. 17th, Martin Bolgin. 18th, Morton Verneson. 19th, Matthew Chan. 20th, Simon Crane. 21st, Miles Dixon. 22nd, Jack Nichols. 23rd, Mark Wicks. 24th, Wesley Morris. 25th, Jeff Mead. 26th, Chris Allen and 27th at the back of the field is William Trengas. All set then for 30 laps of the Spa-Francorchamps circuit here in Belgium. And we've got, of course, an all CSG front row. You'll be looking from OJ Clark's car. And I've got the TV feed in front of me right here. Watching the front row, it's Cooper. As you'll see it from OJ Clark's car on the left at the front. Schumacher on the right, all CSG front row. Cassette, the lights are going to be up then. And the race hit at Spa for the Super Cup is underway. Decent start by Cooper, a better start by Schumacher. He's going to pull alongside and look at Buster Voss trying to come alongside Castle towards La Source for the first time and down to the hairpin. Looks like Schumacher's got the inside line, better traction. He's taken the lead from his teammate into turn one and they're going to go side by side with two CSG cars down towards the daunting Eau Rouge corner. Castle still third, ahead of Cullen with OJ Clark fifth and in sixth place is Andrew Morgan as they file through over each for the first time. And the two CSG cars now nose to tail. We've got massive car we've got cars going very wide in the background. In fact, Jason Muscat's gone all the way down to the ninth place already. Battling with Philip Cullen down towards uh, Le Con for the first time. And Chris Allen started from the pit lane, as has also Matthew Chan and Simon Crane. They're all getting away just now. But back at the front, it's still Alex Cooper leading. But now we've got Martin Schumacher, who's under immense pressure now from Pedacassa. And also OJ Clark getting right into the mix as well. As is uh, Philip Cullen. And then also we've got Pedacassa trying to go up the inside at Rivage of Martin Schumacher, as uh, Jeff Mead is now retired from the race. Our first time already on lap one. And uh, we've got cars going every which way behind. There's some kind of... Uh, Battle going on, but there's a wreck battle here. Look at that. Schumacher forcing Kassa wise. They go down towards the very high speed double apex left hander of Puon for the first time. Schumacher still in second. But look at Clark and Cullen. They're all over the back of the Torrent Motorsport car. And we've got Cullen trying to go around the outside of uh, Clark. And also look at Andrew Morgan in the Target Express car in sixth place. And uh, Morgan's are trying to get up the inside of Cullen as they go on through to the two part section of Stavolo onto the back section through the Ardennes Forest for the first time. And Cullen. And Cooper, excuse me, streaking away already with a 1.7 second lead. And there's a massive train of cars led by Schumacher. A five car train then. And in order, it's Schumacher, Kassa, then Clark. And then we've got DeVos. It's DeVos actually, excuse me, not Cullen. Cullen was actually a little bit further back. And a bit of contact as Clark's trying to get past Kassa then. And Clark's a trap the inside. It's the first part of the bus stop. And look at Morgan as well. Morgan behind. Straight up the inside of Bart DeVos. And he also gives OJ Clark a tap. And Morgan's very keen to get this race underway and to move up through the field. And Kassa now has a look in third place then at Schumacher in second. Into last source for the second time. And he's gone very wide. Kassa's got up the inside. They're going to go side by side down towards Eau Rouge. And talk about side by side. Just behind for fourth, fifth, fourth or fifth place. It's going to be DeVos and Morgan side by side. Just behind OJ Clark. And look at Kassa and Schumacher side by side through Eau Rouge. That is heart stopping stuff. But Schumacher stays ahead now. Kassa it has to slip stream down, th down the Kemmel straight. As... Cooper extends his gap now to two seconds already, down towards it's two and a half seconds now, and Kassa goes round the outside of Schumacher at Lake Homme. And now through Malmedy, and Jack Nichols is out of the race, unfortunately, while he's returning after his Olympic coverage. He's been away, but it's uh, not a good start to his comeback here with Hawkeye Racing. As uh, Schumacher, oh no, he's tapped Kassa, he's tapped him once, tapped him twice. 
and Schumacher drops down to what looks like fifth place. And look at OJ Clark trying to get second. Goes round the outside of a left hander down towards Puon. Side by side down towards and look at Bart Devos trying to make it three wide down towards Puon. And Bart Devos tries to get up the inside. He's always made it stick. They're going to go side by side again. And Schumacher is trying to make in the mix. What a fantastic battle this is up at the front. Five cars scrap for second place. And Morgan's down the inside at Fan Yates of Schumacher. And OJ Clark and Devos for third place battling away. We can go on board Bart DeVos, we can watch the battling as they go on to Sta through Stavolo then. And he's gone very wide, and there goes Bart DeVos up the inside then towards the third place. Side by side, and the exit of Stavolo into the Arden Forest on the back section once again. DeVos is in that toe, but look at Schum Schumacher just behind as well, in fifth place. And then look at also just behind, we've got Sir Martin O'Connor in the NRT racing car tagging on. So it's going to be a six car train for second place. Castle trying to extend his advantage already as... OJ Clark leaves it last of a late break as DeVos trying to go around the outside and Bart Devos has been tapped and he's been spun and a lot of cars are going past him now he's got to get it back again he's wheel spinning and he's down to 12th place so a lot of cars have gone past him but now back up at the front the gap is now incredibly 5.1 seconds between Cooper in first and Kassa in second place and the traffic jam is getting even bigger Clark's trying to pull away and chase after Kassa in third place Schumacher is now fourth and he's now ahead of that train and just behind we've got Morgan, O'Connor, Grek and Cullens in there as well. In the Halcyon Racing car. Camilleri's also trying to tag on as well. Jim Paris has started 14th on the grid. He's up to 10th already. He's in the top 10. Rouse is 11th. Bart DeVos will recover back down to 12th. Scott Bennett is just ahead of Boyd Bryson in 13th and 14th. And 15th is Morton Vernison in the first of the Green Stripes Racing car. So back up at the front. And uh, really, Cooper's got trying to extend his advantage and keep this race all to himself. But behind, what dra what a fantastic scrap's been going on behind. And there's a huge battle going on. Again, still that train of cars led by Schumacher. In fourth place. So, decent race enough so far. And just behind, look at that. We've got Philip Cullen and... This is for... I think it's, Kat, it's uh, Paris' and Andres Peshtoff is out of the race, as you've seen on my screen. And we've got O'Connor and Cullen, who are really battling away. And O'Connor... In fact, is O'Connor... A car's not really showing a sixth on my screen. He's actually... No, I think he's made possibly maybe a lap down because he's now got Priest up the inside. Priest is absolutely storming through the field. And Cullen's down to ninth now. Oh, and contact. Connor's been pushed into the, into the gravel. And Cullen with a huge knock into the wall. And lucky no one else got involved in that one. Cullen's in the middle of a track. That's pretty dangerous. I'm pretty sure the race director will want to work with him after that one. But Cullen gets back going again in 15th place. So it's only, <laughs> only on lap three. And already the drama's kicking off here. Cullen's rejoined and back in 16th. As now Cooper is once ahead, gets again extending his lead. The gap's now down to 5.1 seconds as Cadder now clears the carnage behind him and starts his charge after the Englishman for, in, in the CSG racing car. Then we've still got... Oh, and what's going on here? We've got, we've got more cars slipping, slipping behind. Just looking through the fields. So have we got any cars in the pits? Oh, no, Schumacher's, Schumacher's been... Schumacher has, looks like he's been tapped at the uh, the bus stop chicane. He's in the pits without a rear wing. We can get a replay at all. And he came down towards the bus stop. And oh, Morgan tried it down the inside. And was there contact? Well, that's pretty weird. Oh, there was. Morgan steers into him. Schumacher spins, clouts the wall on the exit of the final corner of the bus stop. And that's he also not only does he have to try and get back to the pits, he drives the wrong way down the track. And also Scott Bennett was off as well. And oh. And, Scott Bennett also what drove in front of uh, Schumacher as well, but I think Schumacher is going to get have a word, going to have a penalty, not for the contact, but for the driving the wrong way across the circuit. And he's now down. He's back out. He's got a new rear wing now out and back into the race. Just exit the pits now. Back down in 20 seconds. So what was a great start with both cars on the front row for CSG racing. It's turning into a kind of a, a hot, kind of a, 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 a tale of two races. Schumacher's race has gone into an absolute nightmare where at the moment it's still a dream race so far for Alex Cooper with the gap still 5.6 seconds now he's extended by half a second already on this lap a wonderful race by OJ Clark in third place for No Fear Racing Jim Parise is up to fourth place unbelievable there's a massive scrap going on behind for sixth place between Camilleri, DeVos and Adam Rouse as well is up in there as well he started out of the top ten and it's basically look at that they literally nose the tail Camilleri's now got DeVos on the inside to be blown on oh no Bart DeVos is gone that was a really ambitious move and it hasn't worked because Bart DeVos does a complete 360 after contact with Camilleri and Gresh has got through as well. And just behind we've got O'Connor and Bryson battling for 10th place. Chris Allen's out of the race as well. And Matthew Chan's been spun round as well up, up at the 
He's a lap down, and he's been... Oh, and that was close. Almost took out Morton Vernison. Matthew Chan, then, is in the pits after with no front wing. He's back up the battle for 10th place between Bryson and Connor. O'Connor tries to get his nose up the inside through the source, but he's not close enough. Almost got it taken off there as well, but they're going to head down towards Eau Rouge again. Hopefully, we're covering as many of these battles as we can for you, because, uh, of course, we only really have access to the onboard cameras on this broadcast, so apologies for that. But... Uh, we got a battle for fourth place, and we've got Morgan and Priest. Is Priest trying to go around the outside again and retake fourth, and he has done that. He's gone past the Englishman. So Jim Priest is the Greek driver. He's up to fourth place. Then so Torrent. It's all going well for them. They're second and fourth. What a haul of points that will be. And Morgan tries up the inside. That's really ambitious. And almost took Priest that with him. Almost really wiped him out. That was pretty risky stuff. Looks at the driving. It's kind of taking out a bit of a turn for the worse for some of these drivers at the moment. Could be a bit better. Let's quickly look back to the battle for what is now ninth place. Oh, and DeVos is back again. He's, he's hit Morton Vernison. <laughs> you don't really know where to look at the moment. Oh, apologies, just keeping our, our broadcast camera um, uh, director. And DeVos has spun again. He's been hit by Bolgin into the barriers. He loses his left, left rear wheel and his rear wing. And that is a retirement instantly. So Bart DeVos, after a brilliant qualifying session, is out of the race then for Halcyon Racing. And that's really disappointing. He's after a good result. But uh, I hope that uh, our, broad our camera direct broadcast director, or at least looking after our cameras, uh, Dave Carsmith, is uh, not having too much of a problem with uh, trying to switch from battle to battle because it's, uh, there's a lot going on these first few laps. We've still got roughly another 25 or so. We're on lap six then of the Super Cup Belgian Grand Prix. Let's quickly look around down the top ten for you. Alex Cooper now leads with a 6.1 second advantage over Pedicata in second. OJ Clark holds third for No Fear Racing. Jim Parisis is still battling away with Andrew Morgan for fourth place. Parisis fourth and Morgan fifth. There's about for sixth going on now between Camilleri and Terence Grek for Multiforce. And Grek is going to go side by side towards Eau Rouge. And Grek actually outdrags him before the, uh, the, very, the very high speed uphill corner. Camilleri will be back in the toe and trying to grab sixth place back. Is now just in front. The battle for fourth place. Morgan and Parisis now side by side. And Morgan. With a great toe down Kemmel straight and into Le Com, out breaks Priestess around the outside and takes the position from him. So that is going to be a good race long battle. And Priestess again trying to eager, eagerly take the place back as they go into Ravage. Morgan holds the inside line. Priestess is going to try and do the switch back. In fact, he may have done that. In fact, he has. And he's trying to go around the outside. There's more contact. Priestess is over the curves again. And Greg is still staying ahead of Camilleri behind. But this battle for fourth place is the one that's really hotting up. And Morgan holds on for the moment then. So Morgan in fourth place. Paris is back down to fifth. And Camilleri having a wonderful race in seventh place at the moment. For Water Blue Racing. Of course, it's a team that Andrew Morgan used to, was previously racing for. And of course, scored his first victory in GPPWC here in, uh, in Canada. And Terence Grek has gone. Terence Grek spins on the entrance to Stavolo. Sixth place is now eighth place now. As uh, now there goes Rouse. Connor goes through. Boy, Bryson's gone through. Phil Cullen will now go through. That's very close. Cullen almost got wiped out by Terence Gregg. That was pretty heart-stopping. And he's rejoined in 11. I say ahead of Martin Bolgin, but he's now going to be passed by him down the straight unless Terence Gregg's got the acceleration. And Morton Vernson in the green stripes racing car is going to try and tag on. And Gregg's gone... Bolgin's gone round the outside of Gregg. Vernus is trying to do the same. And Gregg's now going to go back up the inside of the Target Express car into the bus stop chicane. Grek holds on. Bolgan trying to get his nose up the inside, but he hasn't got it there far enough. And this train carries on then in this battle for what is at the moment 11th place. And uh, look at that. Bolgan trying to get up the inside. Versus is just behind then in 12th place, then in 13th place then. So this well intriguing battle of this stream down towards Eau Rouge once again for the seventh time. And. Jason Muscat down in 17th place. That's, uh, that's rather unfortunate. He must have had one or two incidents at the beginning. After an excellent qualifying, he's come back here after he's been... Oh! William Trengas has spun. 17th place. We get a replay of that. He spun on the exit of La Source. He spun again. So either his tyres have gone already, or he's not really having a good time of it. But the Australian gets going again. He's down to 18th. He's lost another place to Simon Crane in the second water blue racing car. Martin Schumacher is still back up there, it's still down in 19th. Uh, oh, that's not quite inappropriate. Uh, just seen uh, 
Oh, hold on. Also, I've seen something else. I've just seen... You may not have spotted it, but OJ Clark has passed Pedacasa, and he did it on the run down to Le Con. The earlier on this lap. So OJ Clark is absolutely flying at the moment. Second place now for No Fear Racing. Gap, if it comes on my screen in a moment. Let's have a look. Well, Clark is obviously now second, and Picasso is now third. Parisi is now trying to chase after his teammate in fourth ahead of Andrew Morgan. Gap is now 7.4 seconds between Cooper and Clark. And the gap between, let's have a look at Casa and Parisi, the two Toro Motorsport cars, is 10 se is seven is 9.2 seconds. And again, Parisi is now still holding. In fact, Parisi is now. I've just seen back ahead of Andrew Morgan. Apologies, we're late catching up on these, of course, without our usual simracer.tv broadcast. We can't really catch these battles properly, and of course, with our, our cameraman, Dave Carsmith, standing in with this rather bodge shot of a broadcast that we're bringing to you. We've only got TV cams, so that's all we can really... Sorry, um, T cams on the uh, on the tops of the car, so we can, only, we can only give you onboard shots. Back at the battle for fourth, though. Uh, Morgan Priest is again side by side. Morgan wants the fourth place back again into the comp. And now they'll head through Malmody, and Priest now holds on to fourth place for Morgan. Looking very racy indeed for Tire Express. And uh, Mercy Morris has retired. Also, he actually put some... He, unfortunately, if you saw the uh, the chat box there, he also uh, put in the chat as well, and obviously the race director says not to. So he'll be proud of us as well. There's a, there's a front wing in the middle of the track as well. There's a front wing in the middle of the track on the exit of the left-hander before the downhill approach to Puon. And... Uh, Another driver's doing fantastically well. Sixth place, Keith Camilleri was to be racing. He's not really done that very much racing with us here at GPWC, but nonetheless, what a fantastic run this is. And seventh, Adam Rouse. Eighth is Boyd Bryson. Ninth, Phil Cullen. And tenth is Martin O'Connor. Terence Greg after his spin is still 11th. Martin Bolgan, 12th. Morton Vernon, 13th. And then the two Kerno Sport cars of Mark Wicks and Scott Bennett running out, running out the top 15. Jason Muscat's up to 16th. Schumacher 17th, he's obviously got past Will Tringas. And Simon Crane's lost his front wing. 18th place, which is now 19th now, was uh, he's lapped by by the by a few of the fee top by the last few cars in the top ten. So that was rather unfortunate. He looks like he's lost it. Let's see where he has lost it. Just rewind here. And he lost it. I I think that's actually the front wing that was in the middle of the track. Uh before when we looked at it, or hopefully if you looked at it, he also has got a, le a left right rear puncture as well. Right, which mentioned damage, and that's looking there as well. Mark Wicks was very close not to slam into the back of Simon Crane there. Crane was trying to get off the racing line, but still, but he's still on the racing line with a puncture and, a, and no front wing. But he's crawled back to the pit, so that's not a very good fortune for Simon Crane at all. So, back up at the front, Alex Cooper still leads it by eight and a half seconds. But Clark is now under attack again from Jim per from Peter Casa. So this is going to be quite intriguing. As you see, OJ usually at the moment races for Red Archer in the Super League, but he's taking driving duties in the Super Cup. He's taken the seat that Nick Newcomb had last time out in Monza. Third place, Pedacast then gives chase to the Englishman in front. It's No Fear versus Torrent. At the moment, No Fear has the advantage, but for how long? As Clark goes pretty wide on the exit of the Fanier chicane. Through the first part of Stavolo. Clean, clean enough exit through the second part. Onto this wonderful flat back section. You, you're pretty much flat out, but 25 odd seconds in this in this section, but 20, 25 odd se seconds. Through Blanchimont. Not a hint of lift at all, and Cass is closing in slowly. Just trying to just tag onto the back of the uh, Englishman. Closes under braking through the bus stop. And. Uh, and just behind, battle for fourth place, still raging between Paris and Morgan. So both the Torrent Motorsport cars are busy fighting other cars for position. And gone ball with fifth place Andrew Morgan in really in the toe of Jim Paris's car. Darts to the outside. We'll try the switch back as Paris defends the inside line, and he does it. Wonderful pass. I almost thought he made it stick. As Paris gets the better traction, now we'll see he's got the better straight line speed. Down towards O'Rouge. They're literally side by side. And who's going to be the bravest? It's Morgan. Gets his nose ahead. And now it's Paris who's doing the chasing. Out of O'Rouge. Through the Radion kink. And on towards Kemmel Straits. It's now Paris who's in, in the firing... Uh, it's now Paris who's now, has all the, is now in a prime position. And will try around the outside of Lake Arm and don't make it stick. 
A lot of passes being made around the outside here at, at uh, Spa. In the corners where there's a lot of room where you can do that. Morgan a little bit squirrely on the exit of Malmody. And looking at... Oh, he's actually run too deep as well through Ravage. So, having a bit of a tough time of it. What, is there any damage, possibly, with con from contact with Parisis? Well, actually, Parisis actually had a big twitch, I think, out of the left-hander down towards Puon. So, in fact, Morgan throws it into Puon. And again, he's... Big twitch, how did he not spin that? Fifth place Andrew Morgan is now going to come under attack soon enough from Keith Camilleri. In fact he is right now because the water blue driver is now on his tail. Sixth place then, Keith Camilleri. Smells a top five. He's, he's in fantastic form to grab one. Exit out of Stabolo then. On to the back section through the Ardem Forest then. And Morgan is powerless to prevent Camilleri from grabbing a toe as they head through Blanchimont at flat out and Camilleri then I don't think, don't think he's quite close enough to make a move down the inside of the bus stop but a tidy exit out, out of it will give him a definite advantage a big twitch out of bus stop from Morgan and that's going to give Camilleri the chance to really close up and also just behind in 7th place is Adam Rouse in the Hawkeye, Hawkeye racing so Rouse trying to get himself into the top 5 and despite these cars running low traction control, they still do get quite squirrely under traction. Or under acceleration, rather. As Back to the battle for second place, then, as uh, OJ Clark still being chased by Jim Parisis. Both a little wide on the exit of Malmody. Plunging downhill through Avage. And downhill still through the left-hander. Only name I know of that one is it's uh, what was once called Copenhagen. So I suppose we can call it Copenhagen if you like. Pull on. And Clark holds on for the moment. But Kasser, who needs all the points he can get to prevent Alex Cooper from taking too many away from him with another race win. He needs to get past Clark at some point. If it's not on track, he needs to do it in the pit stops. As... Uh, and Camilleri, just as a quick note, has got past Andrew Morgan. So Camilleri is into the top five then for Waterbury Racing. Definitely putting in a candidate for driver of the day. He's not featured too much. Look at that, he's actually really, he's already, he's streaking away from Andrew Morgan. And he's got enough, I think he's got enough, I think he may have enough pace to chase off Jim Parisi. In fact, he is. He's really giving it the beans as he goes through towards Blanchimont. And not only is Morgan Ham to watch Camilleri drive away from him, he'll have to watch his rear view mirrors because Adam Rouse is now looming large in them. And he's hungry for sixth place. So Morgan, unfortunately, steadily dropping back through the field after an impressive start. And whilst we stay with that, just quick, just quick note, I'm having a look at the battle between seconds and Clark is now pulled away ever so slightly from Casa but Casa's closed up again under breaking through Lecom and actually oh, Morgan's got back past Camilleri Morgan's got back past Camilleri and now Rouse is having a look as well he's darts out to the inside but hasn't got quite got the traction for it so fifth sixth and seventh you can almost throw a blanket over them Morgan Camilleri and Rouse Camilleri with a little bit of a twitch, but he's, he's, looks like he's, 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 got the, he's, he's getting better rear, rear end traction from his water blue car. Bit of a twitch through Copenhagen and down towards Puon once again for the 12th time. Quick note, and Cooper has extended, and Cass has got past uh, Clark again. No, Clark's off! We're going to replay, Clark is off! Clark is off in the gravel and in, in the barriers up at, Pou at Fanye, the Fanye chicane. I'm going to fast forward and see what happens. Now, Castle was getting very close. He was close pretty much from when we left him. And through Fanye. And what happened on the exit? Did he put the power down too early? Oh, no, he caught the, no, oh, no, he caught the, the, the curb on the exit of Fanye. He's actually, down, he's actually down on the gravel at Stavolo on the entrance. He's now going to try and get that car going again. He has. But now he's under real pressure now from fourth place Andrew Morgan. Well, fifth place Andrew Morgan. He's gone round the outside. And out breaks him into the bus stop chicane. What a wonderful pass that was from Morgan. 
So Clark then is now falling into the clutches of this battling trio. Has now made it a quartet. So now he finds himself in the middle of this battle, and Camilleri is looking very racy indeed. He's trying to get onto the inside of Clark as they go down towards O Rouge. He has the toe then. Sixth place Camilleri, if we can go on board with him. Through O Rouge they go, and you should be staring at the back of the, uh, the luminous green rear wing of OJ Clark as they head down through the Radion King onto Camel Straight once again. And in fact, Clark's actually got a fantastic run then. On Mind You Morgan, he's going to try and go around the outside down through it. Will he Will he make it stick? Just about. He has. So another outside pass through that corner. And Morgan's going to try and get the payback through Malmody. He's on the grass and Camelot's going to go on the inside and takes fifth place from him. And Morgan's gone very wide. He's losing it. And just about gathers it up a bit. The process has lost another place to, to Adam Rouse. So sixth goes to Adam Rouse then. Morgan tr thought about going down the inside of Copenhagen, but couldn't quite make that one stick. And there's battles going over. And Paris is slowing. Now, Paris is, has he had a spin somewhere? Let me, let me quickly fast forward and see if I can have a look at that. But Paris is, is definitely down to fifth place. So he was up there in third. And making it two Torrent Motorsport cars in the top three. But let's see what happens. Now, he's, what happened here? Oh, I see what happened. He got a big twitch on the exit of Copenhagen. Almost put it into the barriers. And obviously, we caught him as he, as he was recovering. So no massive damage, it doesn't seem. But he's now down in fifth place. And this now could be a quite exciting battle. Now, it's a five-car train then. And in front, Camilleri and, oh, and Clark are side by side, and Rass has also got past Morgan behind them. And Clark resumes third, what is now third place again. And now Paris is then on the charge then. He's, he's charging back up through the field. Camilleri defends the outside, inside line. Paris just looks to the outside. Gives a bit of a nudge through the bus stop. Three goes, and Morgan gets back past Rass again. <laughs> Switching positions, hand of a fist here. There's lots of places here where you can slipstream, lots of places where you can grab a toe and try and pull alongside. I think most of these drivers will probably be using the, the low downforce wing setup, which is why we're getting so many drafting chances, so, so many slipstreams, so many overtakes being made as a result of grabbing a toe. And Paris, look at that, he's been pushed onto the grass by Camilleri. Camilleri with a very stringent defence, but Paris just holds on. He's going to look around the outside. No, Camilleri's going to outbreak himself. He has. And half spins and almost... Ca oh, no. He's been caught by Rouse. He's lost his rear wing. Rouse spins in sympathy. And Rouse is down to... Well, Camilleri carries on without a rear wing. Trengas is out of the race as well. as a bit of a side note. Rouse carries on in eighth place. But he'll be under attack from both Philip Cullen and Terence Grech. But it's all going on here. So Camilleri now is the latest casualty. And that's a, re that's a real shame. He was really pushing on. Is that Camilleri... He's struggling to keep that car on the track. As now once again Paris is then he's having to deal with OJ Clark. So quickly up at the up in back in third place. Well Clark has had to deal with one top motorsport car, and now he's got to deal with the other. Morgan is now in a bit of in a bit of no man's land in fifth place. Trying to hold on. Boy Bryson amongst all of this has gone to the dizzying heights of sixth. Oh and Cavalieri's caused Rouse to spin again. And in the process, here comes Carl and Grech, and they've gone round the outside of Camilleri. And that means now that Rouse gets going again. He's back down to 11th. He's been passed by. Oh, Camilleri spun again on the exit quickly. Ninth place. Spins again on the exit of Stavalone. O'Connor goes through for ninth. Here comes Rouse again. So wouldn't it be third time that Camilleri's going to get in his way? Let's have a look. Not this time. He does manage to slither through. And Camilleri has a rearing off somewhere as well, look. It's a rearing just on the right on the bit on the runoff area. As behind quickly, there's about the twelfth going on. Bolgin and Vernison. Vernison has caught up on the run towards the bus stop. And decent traction. He'll have the run then down towards the first corner at Las Sources. Camilleri now pits to get that rear wing replaced. that Rouse has carried on. He hasn't pitted. Seems to be that car's not too badly damaged. But battle is for 11th then. Bolgin will now have Vernison closing in. And Vernison now has the toe. And which way is he going to let you go to the inside? Bolgin has no choice. He has to leave the green stripes driver's room and Vernison Slips through into 11th place then, so he's in the fringes of the top 10. Next car, of course, is Adam Rouse. He's already up at a corner ahead at Ravage, on the way down towards Copenhagen. 
So let's look then. So we're on lap 15 then. So we're about to get come to half distance then. And Cooper leads the race then by what seems to be... Let's have a look at the gap then. It's 11.6 seconds from what I've last seen. From Penacas in second. OJ Clark back in third place after everything, everything that's gone on. Jim Parisis is now fourth. Andrew Morgan holding station in fifth place ahead of Boyd Bryson, who's gone through all the carnage to get up to sixth. And that'll please uh, Ollie Woods no, no end. Obviously, team boss of Woods Racing. Seventh is Terence Gregg, just holding ahead of, has stationed ahead of Philip Cullen. And Martin O'Connor is ninth. And Adam Rouse, after his couple of spins, rounds out the top ten. And down to 15th, we've got Morton Vernison, Martin Bolgin, Scott Bennett, Jason Muscat, and Martin Schumacher, who's been recovering after his spin up at the bus stop in the first few laps. The gap is now 11.5 seconds between Cooper and Kassa, the two championship rivals. And I think we've got uh, they've got a couple of cars in the pits. Then we have Terence Grek and Boyd Bryson in the pits. So Bryson in from 6th, and Grek was in from 7th. Bryson is now exiting in ninth place ahead of Morton Vernison. And Terence Grek is back out in 11th, just ahead of the Mark Wicks, who's a lap down. Martin Balkins in the pits. And also, just a quick side note, is that Jason Muscat has got past Scott Bennett for 12th place. So Muscat up to 12th. And Bennett is up to 13th. So that's not too bad. And Martin Bolgin, I think, has uh, had something go wrong. Bolgin's in the pits. Bolgin's, of course, is in the pits then. And leaves. He will down to 16th as uh, the recovering Keith Camilleri swoops around at La Source. And Bolgin gets going against the 16th then. Mark, 16th place, Mark Bolgin back out of the pits. And Cooper seems to have the edge ever so slightly on Casa. Gaps now, from what I can see, 11.7 seconds. What's the gap as he comes across the line this time? It is 11.5, so it seems to be getting pretty static then. Clark holding station in third, ahead of Paris in fourth. Then about a 10 second gap to Cullum, who's back in fifth, who hasn't stopped yet. We have the first few cars making their pit stops, of course. I'm pretty sure we'll get the likes of maybe Cooper and Kassa. Front runners will want to start thinking about making a tyre change soon. So Phil Cullen then in fifth. Martin O'Connor stays in sixth. Rouse goes through and does not pit. What about Morton Vernison? He was battling along, I believe, I think with Martin Bolgin. Boyd Bryson's just behind him in ninth. He's still, I think, still struggling, I think, to get his tyres back up to temperature. Grek, who's back out, of course, in tenth. So the two multi force cars running tenth and eleventh. And what about Muscat? Is Muscat heading into the pits? No, he carries on. Bennett carries on. What about Schumacher? Of course, Schumacher will probably switch his strategy. So 13th place I'm watching here. And Schumacher carries on. So it looks like some of the front runners may be stopping maybe on this lap or the next couple of laps. Cooper is now out of Stavolo in the lead and heading up towards Blanchimont. Of course, I don't have any information as to if they have their pit lights on. Let's have a look. So Cooper then heads down towards bus stop chicane then. Does he keep right? No, he doesn't. He flicks through and goes for another lap. Now then, here comes second place Pedro Casa. What will he do? He's usually known for going on a rather long stint. And he carries on as well. And Paris, is, whilst we've been talking, has got past OJ Clark. So now it's the Torrent Motorsport cars back. Both cars on the podium once again. And of course, we'll have more cars coming to the pits. And Boyd Bryce, just quickly, quickly as, as a uh, something I've just spotted, has got past Morton Vernison. Um, again, just bear with us if we're not spotting all of these uh, moves and uh, mistakes from, from drivers. Excuse me. As of course, uh, as Simrace.tv is not working properly, as Phil Cullen heads in from fifth. Uh, there's nothing really we can do to help that, unfortunately. So apologies for the fact that this is a rather bodged together broadcast and. Oh, that was close. Matthew Chan, what were you doing there? Adam Rouse had to st kind of steer around Matthew Chan. He had no front wing. I'm not quite sure what he's doing. He had trouble with him back in Silverstone. Doesn't seem to relearn his lesson, I don't think. So, Rouse stops from 7th then. Bry Bryson goes through and reclaims 7th. Grek will go through and grab 8th. Vernison is uh, 
Versus in the pits. He will make his stop. And I think, looks like Rouse will rejoin in ninth place, because obviously because he's gone past Vernon and Muscat's only coming down the pit straight towards La Source now, so he's got enough of a, of a gap. And I think also Scott Bennett, I think he's also going to possibly maybe leapfrog Vernon out of the pits, just about. Who's it going to be? Well, Bennett's got the better run. They'll go side by side now. And Bennett does just about have the legs down towards Eau Rouge. So Bennett out to 11th, but he's yet to stop, of course. It's back up on the front. Is Cooper going to head to the pits? Yes, he does. So leader Alex Cooper is in the pits then for CSG Racing. And now all eyes will be not only on Cooper, but they'll be on second place Kassa to see exactly what he does. Does he peel off? No, he doesn't. So Kassa goes through then. And he will take the lead of this race for the first time. As Kassa is... As, uh, as she, Cooper already away, though. Quick stop. May have just been for tyres as... Uh, hit. Approaching bus stop now, Parisis and Clark. Parisis carries on, as does Clark. And uh, a decent stop from Cullen as well, though. He entered fifth and came out sixth. So, only loses one, pl one position in the process. But he's looking good so far. And Connor's in, so Martin O'Connor will give hand fifth place back to the Irishman in the Halcyon Racing Team car. And interestingly enough, Boyd Bryce is closing in as well. He's closing in on Cullen, so the earlier stop seems to have worked for the Woods Racing driver. As Connor is off his jacks then, and he's uh, heading down pit lane towards the exit. I think he's going to be passed by Terence Greco as well. He, indeed, he, he has. So that is now just about, I think, yes. Greg will have the run down towards Eau Rouge, and indeed he does. So, Greg takes 7th, O'Connor takes 8th. And Matthew Chan has uh, finally left the race. Seems to be a bit of a nuisance in some cases, but there we go. So, looking back then, Cooper's still in 2nd place then. He's got a, a sizable enough, sizable enough gap to Parisius. He's got about 11 seconds. As Casa then... Heads through Blanchimont in the lead. So here he comes then. And is Kassa going to peel off? No, he carries on. So Kassa trying to make his tyres last a bit longer than everyone else is. He's usually very good at doing that. We've seen him go for once. Obviously, it's only really a one-stop race, but still. Kassa trying to, trying to eke out as many laps as he can on these tyres. Parisis! Went very, very quick into the first part of the bus stop chicane. Almost lost it completely. With fantastic car control, though. Keeps it all together. And he may have lost maybe one or two car lengths to Clark. Although he wouldn't have lost too much as it was under braking into the bus stop. But Clark is a little bit closer, though. And Cullen. Only about three and a half odd seconds ahead of... Boyd Bryson. And just behind, we've got a battle going on for what is 8th place, so Rouse and O'Connor. They've, of course, both made their pit stops. So this is, this is for genuine on-track position. And also, Muscat's closing in on that, on that battle as well. So Muscat, on his return to Multiforce, is having a think about possibly moving a bit closer as... Uh, on board with O'Connor, and we're oh, getting very close to Rouse through the uh, last source airfin. But once again, as we've seen quite a few times already in this race, he has a run down towards Eau Rouge. Tags onto it through the corner. And look at that, it's a fantastic exit. And darts to the inside this time, pushes Rouse very wide indeed. Almost running onto the grass there. And O'Connor has eight, but is Rouse going to try and take it back before they can? No, he can't do it. He wasn't far enough alongside, didn't get, wasn't, wasn't in the toe for long enough. Well, that said, Rouse has actually got the seems he's got slightly better traction though. Through the corners, and Rouse looks as though he's definitely keen to get that place back. So, it's not over yet. Rouse trying to go around the outside towards Copenhagen. Can't do it. So Rouse then loses a place to Martin O'Connor. And Cass is in the pits, he's been and gone. 
very quickly. So Casa finally makes his stop on lap number tw end of lap 20. And this now, of course, puts Cooper in back into the lead with a rather sizable gap. And also Clark and Paris are in the pits from third and fourth. And Paris is getting at just ahead of OJ Clark there. So no, no real change in the positions. Cullen still has that roughly 3.2, 3.3 second gap ahead of Boyd Bryson. So not really closing in. It's rather static at the moment. So the pit stops are just shaking out as quickly back to the for 8th place. O'Connor and Rouse. Rouse up the inside of the bus stop. And he's back into 8th. And O'Connor now has to look at these rearview mirrors because while these two have been fighting, Muscat has capitalised and he's now closed right up onto the back of both of the pair of them. So Muscat then smells a few more championship points. And if he can just keep in touching distance of these two, he'll have them and they'll be able to pounce on any mistakes that these two Sure to make as Connor again gets the toe down down Camel straight, and this time goes to the inside again, and again gets to the front, and again covers off Rouse before they come. Rouse tries again, and now it's Rouse who's got to worry about the multi-force driver behind him. Big twitch from Rouse on the exit of Malmody. That's now put him into, into Muscat's clutches. Nice little trio forming here for eighth, the lower the lower rungs of the points, if you like. And whilst you're looking at that, let's just quickly just run through how pit stops have shaken the field up a bit, if at all. So Cooper now leads then with an 8.8 .8 second gap to championship rival Peter Casser in second. Jim Paris has just started 14th on the grid, he's up to third in the second Torrent car. This would be great for the team championship. OJ Clark holds him fourth for no fear. Fifth is Philip Cullen. Who's been closed on ever so slightly? The gaps are down to 3.1 seconds or so. So, still Cullen fifth, Bryce is sixth. Then Terence Grack, who's now seventh. O'Connor's eighth, but it's now been passed by Jason. He's now being, being passed by Jason Muscat. He goes very wide onto the, the runoff area. Maybe prompted by Connor's actions there as Muscat, who has now got past Adam Rouse, who's now ninth. It is O'Connor eighth, Muscat ninth, and Rouse tenth. And Scott Bennett's up to 11th place. I'm not sure if he's pitted or not, but he's still there. Bennett with a bit, bit of a twitch, a bit of a slide through uh, the exit of the bus stop. And back to some of the other drivers that are coming through. Uh, we've got Schumacher back in 14th, trying to close in on Keith Camilleri. Uh, also, uh, we've had quite a few retirements. Look at that. Loads of retirements, in fact. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Andrew Morgan's the latest one with the DNF. So we're back to the, we've lost 10 cars of the 27 that started. So who said that uh, Spa wasn't a, a track of attrition? It certainly is. That's Cooper. Now with a 9.1 second advantage. In fact, I'm, let's look at the latest gap as Casa comes out of the bus stop to start lap 24 it's down, it's down to 8.9 so Cassidy is on the charge on what is fresher tyres so I wonder just how much Cassidy can close in in these last 7 or 8 laps because if he feels that he's got a chance of possibly closing in on the fresher tyres then by god he'll take it so the Norwegian then sets about his mission to close in on Cooper is already, as Cassa heads onto, Radio, onto Kemmel Strait, Cooper is already through Lake Holm and through Malmody now, so he's going to have to go some. Gap's now down to 8.8 .8 seconds. It's coming down, but not down enough. Down, but down quick enough. Either Cooper needs a problem, or Cassa needs to really step it up and find some superhuman speed from somewhere. At the moment, it's going to be what should be three in, in a row then for Alex Cooper. And this will put him even closer to Castle. Although Castle won't lose too many points because of second place. And back to the battle then for eighth place as O'Connor now still holds eighth. And Muscat still, still hasn't found a way past the NRT racing driver. Look at that. And Muscat trying to go alongside through, through O'Rouge. 
He's now pulled alongside through the through the Radeon kick down Kemble straight. And Rasmus trying to go with the multi force driver. He's got the toe. And what's gonna happen here? Rasmus onto the grass. And how did he get that stop? No, he hasn't! He hits O'Connor! And Rasmus spearing off down the escape road. It gets it back together again. And the only one that's benefited from that is in fact Muscat is up to eighth place. O'Connor down to ninth, and I'm pretty sure that Rouse will argue that Morgan didn't give him any room. Uh, uh, that Martin would, didn't give him any room. Of course, Martin will say that Rouse was too ambitious, trying to go down the outside, but what's been what's done is done. So that's a now next target for Muscat to try at least close the gap in is to seventh placed uh, Terence Grech, his teammate. So that should be quite interesting to see how that works out. And still up ahead, still Bryson hasn't been able to close in that much on Cullen in fifth place. He closed up bit by bit. Gap is now 2.3 seconds, so it's closer. And the rate he's going, I think it's going to get... He just keeps chipping away. He'll be with a chance to grab himself a slipstream down one of the, uh, the long, fast sections here at Spa. Wonderful circuit, Spa. It's one of the, the great circuits in, in history, great circuits of the world. Because of its massive sweeps and undulations, and of course the famous corners like, like if you're watching Boy Bryson here now through a rouge. Let's listen. Not a hint of lift at all. I mean, you've got confidence in the car, confidence in your abilities, confidence that the car will stick. It won't spear off or bottom out. And Bryson slowly, just reducing that gap ever, ever so steadily. He can see Cole in front of him. He can see the Irishman. And he's back up at the front, and Cooper's now extended the gap back to 9.4 seconds. So Cooper is now, it's punch and counter punch then between Cooper, between the two championship rivals. As Cooper then heads down through the bus stop chicane. And he will now start lap number 25 then. Six laps to go here at Spa. In this, the 12th round of the 2012 GPBWC Super Cup. And if I look quickly at the point standings. As I see them right now, if I can quickly draw them up. Hopefully we don't miss anything too dramatic, but we'll have a quick look and see if we can find them. Just want to try and see if we can shake out just exactly... What is uh, going to happen here? Well, obviously, Co Cooper will grab 15 points and Castle will gain 12. So the current driver standings then, Castle still leads the championship by literally 20 points. So 15 more points will put Cooper on 127. And 12 points to, to Castle will put him on 144. So it'll be 144 to 127. That's about 17 points, so Cooper will only take 3 points out of Kassa at the moment. So, he, really, he needs to keep putting in these wins, keep putting in these results, in order to continue closing in that gap. Cooper then on this back section through the wonderful flat out Blanchimont corner as now again they head towards the five laps to go then all bit twitchy from Cooper out of the last corner but nice car control keeps it together gap is down 9.5 seconds let's look at the, the latest gap as Casa heads across the line and the gap now stands at 9.2. So it seems to be in the faster sections. Casa has a bit of an, has an answer to come back ever so slightly. But it appears to be then that through the twistier sections, Cooper has a better setup. And that's allowing him to just edge a bit further away from the Norwegian and Championship leader. And really, Cooper needs Casa to have some bad luck in the next few races to give him any hope of possibly trying to snatch the Championship from Torrent's grasp. If they're just starting to calm down now, although that said, the gap is now less than, in fact, it's only one and a half seconds now between 
Cullen and Bryson, so it's showing, it's shaping up to be a showdown between these two for fifth. Parisi still has third, and Clark has actually closed in a little bit. He's only nine tenths of a second behind, so Clark fancies the podium. Let's take a look then. So, go on board with OJ Clark, fourth place. And there is Jim Parisi then. He's hoping to spoil the uh, Clark hoping to spoil the Torrent Party. And grab a podium for no fear, which he would dearly love to do. He runs the team. Oh, and that was close through Copenhagen. Almost lost it, as did Parisis. But through Paul once again. Car staying flat and true. And uh, as we still watch that battle for third, then quick note is that uh, I think Jason Muscat's entered into the pits. I think. Uh, no, he's, he, was, he was letting uh, Alex Cooper through, so Cooper has now lapsed Jason Muscat. And uh, he now sets back to Mary Way. Four laps to go now, as Cooper heads down towards Eau Rouge. But back with this battle then for what is third place, and Cooper just holding, is uh, Clark, excuse me, holding on. Uh, the gap's gone up to about 1.1 seconds, so it seems to be, seems to be now that Parisius... Oh, no, Parisius has gone over the curbs! He lost it under braking, and that has put Clark in a prime position to snatch third place. He's right tucked under the rear wing of the Greek, Greek driver's car. And he'll go to the outside. Will he be able to make this one stick? He's got the grip around the outside. He locks up the inside front wheel. But Paris just holds on, but this is perfect for Clark. He has that runner he needed. He's in the toe down towards Le Eau Rouge. Through they go. And how close do you want it from OJ Clark? He now gets a fantastic run. He's on the inside through the Radion kink down towards Ke down Camel Straight. And Clark then on straight line speed alone from the toe has grabbed third place with four laps to go then. So at the moment it's not going to be a double podium for Torrent Motorsports. It'll be one car on the podium for them. Parisis will finish just outside it unless he can do something about Clark and grab third back. On board with Parisis. And how close do you want him to get? Look at that, he's really put, putting OJ Clark under pressure here. The kind of pressure that possibly caused Parisis to what appeared to be lose it under braking and just he I saw him I just saw him at the corner of my shot launch over the curb. Didn't spin or anything, just did a, had a bit of a half spin. Got it together and was then pressured by Clark all the way down towards from the exit of the bus stop all the way down towards Lake Holm. So but now, the shoe is on the other foot, because Parisis now has a chance to grab himself a toe down towards Blanchimont, and then down towards the bus stop chicane. And if he's quick enough, if he can pull alongside on the exit of Blanchimont, which he may as might, might do in a minute, he goes a bit wide. Will he pull up at, pull up close enough? He doesn't quite. Clark defends the inside line. As they go past the past Martin Bolgan, he's just spun up at the bus stop chicane. Very quickly, Cooper still leads by 9.2 seconds, but it's the battle for third place that we're really looking at. And behind, we've got to watch out as well, because, because there's going to be a change for fifth place in a second as well. Because Cullen has now been caught eventually by Boyd Bryson. So Bryson now smells the top five. But back at the battle for four, third and fourth, on board with Parisis. Then Parisis now has the run then, down towards Lake Holm corner. To the outside, Clark will defend the inside line, but will Parisis rate laser and try the outside run? No, he backs out of it. Fantastic shots you should be seeing here on board with Jim Parise. Look at the rear wing of OJ Clark as they head through Malmody. Three laps to go then. And in the background, Boyd Bryson has got past Phil Cullen for fifth place. That, it was down the straight towards Lake Holm. So, excellent drive by Boyd Bryson. He could be my candidate for driver of the day. But Clark is now having to really withstand the pressure then. He capitalised on Parisis' mistake, and this is now putting him in a prime position to snatch more points from Torrent Motorsports. He's not directly involved in the battle for the championship, neither drivers nor teams, but still, he's running his own race, and whatever points he can grab, he'll take them, and he'll take a podium very nice. He'll very much take a podium. That'll be very nice for OJ Clark to take. And quickly in the background, I've noticed, 
that the that the resurgent Martin Schumacher is back up to 11th place, and is only about just over three seconds behind Scott Bennett. So he's on the fringe of the top 10. So as Schumacher tries to salvage something, Clark and Paris is battle away. And Bryson just quickly back in fifth is pulling away from Cullen in sixth. And uh, and looking back, I think actually looking at it, Schumacher is closing on Bennett hand over fist. He's really, really putting the pressure on and just absolutely eating up the gap between them. And actually Clark up in third. Apologies if this is uh, confusing Dave Carson a little bit, our, our cameraman. But uh, Clark is starting to pull away a bit now from Parisi. So it looks as though, unless there's a major mistake with now, with, with on the uh, they're on the penultimate lap. And Morton Burns is out of the race with suspension failure. We had literally three laps that he was about to start his penultimate lap. Unfortunately, that's put him out of the race. And it's quickly back to the battle for 10th place. And Bennett's got Schumacher all over him. And Schumacher then, on the rear wing of the Kono Sport car, Scott Bennett then, down towards La Source. On the penultimate lap, and I'm pretty sure that Schumacher will try on the inside. He does the dummy, sends it up the inside of Scott Bennett, and that's a wonderful pass from Schumacher to put it up to 10th place then. So inside the top 10 for Martin Schumacher, but back up at the front. Alex Cooper will start his last lap, and the gap is 10.1 seconds to Casas. So really, unless, and not to put a commentator's curse on it, but unless Cooper makes a massive mistake on this last lap, which he hasn't put a foot wrong all the race long, it's going to be his third win in a row. Meanwhile, Clark is pretty much pulling away from Parisis, who doesn't appear to have an answer to the No Fear driver. Bryson is still just ahead of Cullen. Doesn't seem to be pulling away too much, but has enough of a gap not to be, be uh, the victim of, of a slipstream pass. Greg back in seventh. Martin O'Connor's eighth. Rouse is ninth. And Cavalieri's tenth. Schumacher spun. Schumacher spun on the exit. What looks like uh, Malmody of the Rivage corner. And Camilleri's back up in 10th place. So what, Schumacher being a bit too exuberant. Hasn't really worked for him. And the next car that's going to come up behind him, I think, is actually going to be his teammate, Alex Cooper, I think. As he heads down towards Puon for the last time. And basically, Bennett's got passed back for Schumacher. So, Schumacher... It's back past the north of Jason Muscat trying to push on as well. But let's ride then with Alex Cooper for, for the last third of a lap then. And Cooper, of course, has just probably just backed up a little bit just to bring the car home. And well, let's face it, he has been completely unchallenged in this race and he's definitely putting himself into contention. He's, this, this will only put him 17 points behind. It's only going to reduce the gap by three points, but who cares? Any points he can take off the torrent cars, especially Casa, would be a benefit. And through the bus stop then for the last time. And it's going to be a wonderful lights to flag victory for Alex Cooper as Martin Schumacher lets his teammate through. And Alex Cooper makes it three wins in a row at Spa here in the row in the championship. And he grabs the win here at Spa. Better Casa championship leader still in the lead, but he's only closed, lost three points, stays in second. And the battle for third isn't over yet. Clark, is he going to hold on? Or is Parisi going to try a last minute effort? He's not close enough, I don't think. As Clark then, down towards the bus stop for the last time. And he breaks. Parisi breaks even late. He's right on the back of Clark as they go through the bus stop chicane. But I think Clark's just got it, and he has. And just miraculously, capitalising on a mistake, OJ Clark grabs a podium finish for, for No Fear Racing ahead of the second torrent car, Jim Parisi. And looking back then, we've got Boyd Bryson. I'm going to make him now my driver of the day. What a fantastic run he's had. Fifth place then goes to Boyd Bryson. And sixth goes to Cullen. Just ahead of, of Terence Grek. Martin O'Connor will grab ninth and grab eighth. So it's Cullen sixth, Terence Grek seventh. Apologies for the incorrect positions. Here comes Martin Connor then. Eighth place for NRT. Good display from him. Another top ten. And next few cars to come through then are going to be Adam Rouse. About the last three or four cars to finish we've still got are going to be Adam Rouse across the line. And the last two cars to come to finish then will be Keith Camilleri. He'll rue what could have been. He hasn't made his mistake. 
or been got caught too much in the battles, but 10th place, sort of respectable result. And here he comes, last car to come through across the line will be Scott Bennett in 11th. Decent result, just outside of the top 10. I think he can definitely beat, take away some positives. Lights the rears up on the exit, <laughs> exit of the uh, corner as uh, Jason Muscat destroys his car promptly at the last chicane. But nonetheless, he has already finished. And that is the race over. And let's then go through the, the finishing positions in order. And as they were then. So the finishing time, 57 minutes and 6.146 seconds was Alex Cooper. With his third win in a row from Peter Castro in second. OJ Clark on the podium for No Fear Racing. What a fantastic run he put in. And some battles that he put in there at the start and throughout throughout in third. Jim Parisis. Well, he'll be disappointed not to make it both torrent cars on the podium. But fourth place is still respectable. Back to apologies for that. Fifth place then is Boyd Bryson. Sixth is going to be Philip Cullen. Seventh is going to be Terence Grech. Eighth will be Mar is Martin Connor. Ninth is Adam Rouse. And tenth was Keith Camilleri. Uh, outside of the top ten, it was Scott Bennett in eleventh for Kerno Sport. Twelfth, Martin Schumacher for CSG Racing. Thirteenth was Jason Muscat. Fourteenth, Martin Bolgin. And he was the last car to finish and be classified. Uh, the retirements in order were Morton Vernison, classified fifteenth. Mark Wicks classified 16th, Andrew Morgan 17th, Matthew Chan 18th, William Trangas 19th, Simon Crane 20th, Wesley Morris 21st, Miles Dixon 22nd, Bart DeVos 23rd, Chris Allen 24th, Andrews Pestoff 25th, Jack Nichols 26th, and Jeff Mead finishing in 27th and last place, and unfortunately he retired back on the first lap. So that is that then. Uh, let's see, we do have... Uh, Alex Cooper waiting in the interview room, as of course we have Pedicassa. So let's drag them in here. User was moved to your channel. User was moved to your channel. So here they come then. So for the moment we have our top two drivers then in the press conference, and we have both Alex Cooper and Pedicassa with us. Let's start with you, Alex. Uh, big congratulations. I believe that's your third win in a row uh, this season uh, at the moment. And uh, pretty much a lights to flag victory, and it seemed to be after the cows at the start. You seem to have it pretty much in your pocket for the whole race. Just talk us through it. Um, coming into the race, thought it was going to be pretty close, and um, with Petter's times in qualifying and practice, thought it'd be pretty tight with him in the race. Um, got a decent start, and then I got lucky that Petter and I think it was OJ battling behind managed to pull a bit of a gap. Um, pitted fairly early and was worried that Petter might do a zero stop, but luckily he pitted and then pretty much just controlled the uh, gap to the end. So that, well, this win now brings you uh, closer to Castle in the Championship, only by three points. The gap is now will be 17 between you and, and Castle up at the top. Um, obviously, with the next few races coming up, of course, they're going to be crucial to you taking more points off Petter. Um, obviously, are you hoping that obviously that the more wins that you can take away from Petter, the better your charts will be eventually end of the championship on top? Definitely, I need wins if I'm going to get anywhere near Petter. I mean, 17 looks pretty small, but with a point system in Super Cup, it's quite a big gap. So, um, probably going to need. I think I need every every remaining race. So, it'll be tough, but never give up, I suppose. Also, quick note on your teammate Martin Schumacher. He started on the front row alongside you and uh, had a bit of an unfortunate time because I only managed 12th on a lap down. In fact, you actually lapped him just right at the end of the race. Uh, just any words as to essentially as words on um, on his his race today? Do you have anything in terms of uh, maybe sympathy for him? Of course, because he at least didn't have a pretty unfortunate race despite starting on the front row. Yeah, he only started practicing about 30 minutes before um, official practice. So to get on the front row is pretty good, but. He said he was struggling with his brakes, so I'm not sure what happened, to be honest. Well, it's the, if it's only 30 minutes practice to get on, onto the front row of the grid, it's definitely very impressive, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course. But nonetheless, uh, well done, Alex. Another th win for you, and uh, best of luck in the next round. Uh, let's go to uh, second place, Petter Cassidy. Petter, second place, had fun battling with the likes of OJ Clark, but uh, despite that, you still lead the championship. But uh, just talking through your race, it looked um, pretty hectic from where you were. Yeah, 
uh, at a pretty bad start, actually, <laughs> or good considering uh, Silvertron. But uh, already on uh, the second lap, uh, I passed uh, Schumacher, and in one of the corners, he hit my rear, so I almost spun, and after that, the car was, yeah, extremely hard to drive. And I almost lost, lost it uh, three, four times into a bus stop because the car was so overserry during braking. But I think it took me maybe 10 laps to play with uh, the brake balance. And uh, after uh, using more uh, bottle during braking, it got a lot better. But still, I think the pace was at least uh, half a second off pace in the first 10 lap and maybe two, three tenths off in the... Uh, end of the race. So considering that, it was uh, yeah, a good result, but before the race, I was yeah a bit disappointing. <laughs> As you said, uh, with the result, of course, um, Alex has taken a few more points from you. Only three, because of course uh, the gaps are seventeen points. But of course, really for you, the crucial thing is, is that if you can't, if Alex is going to keep on winning, you just really need to keep finishing really at least in second uh, at least in second place in order to try and maintain that gap so of course essentially really as with Alex you need to be pushing really as hard as possible that ideally that don't you uh, yeah the gap is getting down but uh, we'll see I'm not I haven't decided if I'm going to race at uh, Singapore or Sandwich so I guess that's the biggest uh, decision that have to be made Okay, well, uh, what I've uh, also just quick, oh, quick note on also, uh, as we talked about with Alex's teammate Martin, quick note on your teammate's race, uh, Jim Parisis. Um, decent enough race, he's into a battle at the end with OJ Clark and uh, couldn't quite make it both torrent cars on the uh, on the podium. Um, do you have any, any any thoughts on his race? Say again? I said, do, do you have any thoughts on your teammate Jim Parisis's race? He didn't quite make it both torrent cars on the podium, so do you have any thoughts as to um, how his race went? Uh, I think he was a bit lucky in the start. I think he had uh, some incidents just in the head of him. And yeah, more than that, I'm, I don't know, know too much. But he's actually trying to, to join the broadcast, but can't uh, log in for some reason. Yeah, we are just trying to uh, see if we can grab AJ Clark if we can. Um, maybe see if we possibly can, maybe try and grab the team speak details so we can get those to him but uh, if it, we're able to get him in of course we'll wrap the broadcast up and we'll just with, uh, with you two in here um, let's just have a think uh, whilst we're uh, thinking about that let's just grab it, give you some details of when the next time you'll see the uh, Super Cup cars and that is going to be in two weeks time when we move across essentially across the border from Belgium into the Netherlands and it's going to be at the wonderful Circuit Park Zandvoort that's going to be on, the, on on August the 22nd and of course we'll have another race for you there live hopefully uh, without any problems on simrace.tv of course we've had to cobble this broadcast together so unfortunately it's not really been it's not really been the best uh, I think we're going to almost maybe be able to possibly get OJ Clark in a second I don't know if they cost but let's just put the server details into uh, the server chat so hopefully we can get him in if we can waiting for him here uh, let's see if he's possibly able to get in. Yeah, but um, <laughs> that's probably that's probably trying to get into the server. He's only he's asking, asking the IP is the server address. So, uh, but um, should have him here, have him in here in a second. Once we do get him in here, we'll get the thoughts of uh, Phil Post, OJ Clark, because obviously the battles that were going on behind the leaders was definitely fast and furious. I know that, of course, uh, Paddy, you were involved in a few of those. Um, obviously, just obviously the likes of Schumacher and, Schla and Clark and that. Obviously, that's just actually whilst we're waiting for that for um, OJ, just talk us through your battle with uh, OJ, because you had a pretty strong battle going on between the pair of you. Um, just w what was that like from your from your point of view? Uh, for me, it was more about uh, getting used to the car. Uh, as I had almost two second gap Georgia in the, uh, when I get past uh, Schumacher, I think. And because I almost lost the car yeah, sometimes, he got uh, close to me and he had a lot more top speed. So I was hoping that he was uh, just going to drive me with him up to Alex. 
till I noticed that I got used to the car and I was faster than I mean. Then Ojin suddenly made a mistake. Hi, <laughs> you're gone. Cool. Uh, just one more waiting. I do believe we've got Jim Paris is available, I believe. Uh, he's He came fourth. So if we can bring him in here. So uh, let's see if we can bring him in. User here. was moved to your channel. Uh, okay, so we've got uh, fourth. Whilst you wait for third place, OJ Clark, we've got fourth place, uh, Jim Priest in here. So Jim, welcome to the uh, broadcast booth. Um, as we're saying to Pella just now, uh, very unlucky you couldn't make it both torrent cars on the on the uh, on the podium. But just talk us through um, how your race went from your point of view. Of course, you did spend a lot of it uh, coming out through the field. I think you started about 14th on the grid. So I think 14th to fourth was a fantastic drive. But just talk talk us through from your point of view, just the main points of your race. Yeah, hello. And uh, yeah, I started 14th in the grid, uh, and after uh, turn one on the start, I was uh, already 20th. <laughs> I lost six places there, and then I I was very lucky avoiding some uh, incidents in fraud. And after uh, two or three laps, I think I was already in the seventh place. That was a big surprise. Many incidents, and I was very lucky. And then uh, I had some uh, some very good battle with uh, Andrew Morgan, I think, 